Hi, I'm Maria Beatriz La Morra, and welcome to Coffee. It's period. So, <laughs> um, I know a lot of people were looking for the Turkish coffee, and that will happen in the second part of the class. But right now, I would like to demonstrate what I believe is the oldest way of making coffee because they're still doing it. Just like Turkish coffee, they're still doing it. Um, Ethiopian coffee is, I can't imagine that this pot was reinvented in 1920. Um, it is terracotta or earthenware, it's earthenware. Um, and they have special tools to form them so that you can't even see down in it, all right? Um, which makes making this coffee not a science, but an art. You've got to feel, hear, and smell everything happening because you can't see it. Um, right now, I have it on the on the fire because I'm cleaning it out a little bit. But I do have beans because Ethiopian prep coffee preparation starts with roasting the beans. The beans look like this. They're very tiny and they have kind of a citrusy after finish. When you, when you finally roast them and eat them. And right, I mean, drink them. Right now, I'm just gonna throw these into the fire. But the way both the Ethiopians and we can find in Turkey, they roasted their beans was they literally got a scupper or a little tiny pot on a long handle and put it in and kept agitating so they wouldn't scorch. I started these a while ago, um, so they're maybe a third of the way done. Um, some people have asked me in class, do you do it to first crack or second crack? I'm afraid I still don't know what those terms mean. Um, you do it until it's like medium. I was told once you do it till they are dark and shiny and the oils are coming out, but that always delivers a burned test to me. So I have pulled it back to medium brown, all of them. And if you can see right now, they are not evenly colored. They are, some of them are still green. Some of them are still brown. Um, so hopefully they will get there eventually. While I am roasting, and it takes a while. But they smell uh, delicious. Yes, they smell delicious. That will come into play later, actually, because that is part of the gift of making coffee for your friends and loved ones, is that why should the commercial coffee roaster get all the fun? So... <laughs> Um, the fairy tale, if you will, or the legend of coffee in Ethiopia starts with Kaldi the goat herd. If you mention Kaldi the goat herd to anyone from Ethiopia, it's like mentioning Cinderella here. Everybody knows him. Kaldi the goat herd was tending the goats for a monastery when he noticed that they were eating berries off of a certain bush and getting so hyper he couldn't keep up with them. So, and this is one of the reasons I believe it must be true because young boys will put anything in their mouths and try it. So since the goats were eating it, the young man tried to eat them and found that he could then keep up with the goats. First caffeine high, folks. So he collected them in his script, and when he had to report into the monastery, he went to the abbot 
Eli Abbott praised him for not having lost any goats that year. And he says, yes, and look, I have these magic berries that will that will give you energy and they taste delicious. And well, no, he didn't say they taste delicious. He actually gave them to the abbot. The abbot put one in his mouth. And I don't know if you've ever tried a coffee berry off the bush, but they're really pretty vile. Bitter. <laughs> and he threw the rest of them into the fire and proceeded to rip poor Caldi a new one. While he was yelling at him, and apparently the tirade went on for a while because you can see how long it takes these to roast, um, the smell of roasting coffee came from the fireplace and he said, oh, maybe I've been a bit hasty. And he raked them out of the fire and threw them into the bucket of water because they were hot. Um, and that is supposedly how the first coffee was brewed. So with the first coffee being brewed, apparently, um, this is also, I should have said in the beginning that Ethiopia and Yemen for apparently centuries have argued as to where the first coffee grew. Who could claim the first coffee bush? No, it's not Colombia under any stretch of the imagination. Juan Valdez, you're out of luck. But botanical uh, archeologists, I don't know, a couple of years ago, finally established that yes, it was Ethiopia and not Yemen that had the first coffee bush. They, they first grew on a mountain somewhere in Ethiopia. And Yemen is rather annoyed that it has been proven that they're losing that battle. That, um, but because of that, they are the first people to have been preparing it. And if you look up Ethiopian coffee now, somebody preparing it, you will see them roasting the coffee, them making the coffee in a pot like this and pouring the coffee. And it's actually a ritual, not as elaborate by any stretch of the imagination as the Japanese tea ceremony, but it's still important. And it still is a way of honoring your guests and your loved ones when someone goes through the village and announces, announces it's time for the coffee. Usually the kid goes out and does that while um, the lady of the house prepares to make the coffee. And the first thing she does is after they arrive, she starts to roast it. If you want to look, this is, it is getting darker but not, everything isn't brown yet. There's still some green looking here. So I may be agitating it a bit too much for today. <laughs> but, and I am heating this just to give it a good clean up because it's been sitting in storage for a while. Needless to say, you can't get in and scrub it. <laughs> Aha. Okay. Yeah. It smells clean now. Ooh, and I hope I didn't scorch any beans. Um... There are coffee roasters in the Topkapi Palace, which is, you know, the Turkish Museum of all things. 
and they have little pots on the end of a long thing with usually with a cover on them and you can find <coughs> excuse me as well um when you watch somebody do ethiopian coffee i mean nowadays they don't get anything really fancy but they'll take like a small cooking pan with a long handle and do it that way yes this is this is patience needing <laughs> but there's something very soothing about getting to smell coffee roasting um, I should leave it and stir it and leave it and stir it. You will find your own way, whatever it is. The pot is called a Jebina. J J E B N A, I believe. Um, and it is round on the bottom. The two spouts are extremely narrow. You cannot see in them at all. Um, you can kind of hear when you're filling it how high it's going. You never want to get it to the spout because that means when it starts to boil, it'll come right out. You usually want to keep it to about here when you fill it. Um, and it comes with this loose plug to hold the heat in so it'll boil better. And this napkin ring to literally keep it from rolling when you put it on the table. Um, but that also makes it, I think, behave better sitting in the coals. Um, you do need coals, not a raging fire, or you will burn it. Um, raging fire is 450 degrees, upwards of 450 degrees, and coals are about 350 degrees. So you need a medium heat for that. If you're doing this on a gas stove, it's a medium flame. We're close. We are close. Um, let me see. There is possibly a seasoning, like a twig off of a bush or something, that some people use uh, to flavor their coffee in Ethiopia. I don't know what it is. I have never been able to find that out. But it is probably the only place that I have not been able to find out what, because all the older forms of making coffee, they put some sort of a digestive in it. Um, the Turks do cardamom. The Moroccans do what amounts to a five spice powder of uh, ginger and turmeric and black pepper and um, I don't know, because every block has their own. So, <laughs> but it has those kinds of spicy ingredients in it. Uh, cloves is another one. Cinnamon is another one. Um, and I may have to beef these up a little bit. Ooh, I may need to add some more. It's burning down faster than I thought it would. Um, do we have more coals in there? Okay. Boop. Now, yes, I get smoke in my eyes because I never, the smoke always follows me no matter where I sit on the circle, so it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> um, I would advise you, if you wear contacts, to 
not to do it with contacts or to do it with goggles. Um, we are getting darker. I don't know if you want to, but they are getting, some of them are going to be really, really dark, but I'd like even the green ones to definitely be brown before we go to the next step. Um, you will see a mortar, mortar and pestle over there, which is what I am going to <clears throat> grind the coffee with. Um, and funny thing about this shape mortar and pestle, my mother grew up in Puerto Rico and um, I always remember her having a deep mortar and pestle like that. I did not realize that wasn't the shape everybody had. <laughs> um, and when I came here, the one place I could find them was in Latin American stores. You can find them made by a company called Imusa, or you can get somebody really cool to carve you one. In general, the deep ones are African influenced. And there's a couple of things. Uh, one is, ooh, gosh, I hope that was, that's a husk from a coffee bean and not the wings of something that flew in. <laughs> that's okay, it's getting cooked, it's all pure. <laughs> gorgeous color yeah yeah that's this is my favorite mm -hmm. and it's yeah we're almost there um the uh apparently when i was learning something about um african-american uh enslaved life this is the shape that people remembered to carve for their own use uh, when they were here. And somebody walked into uh, a lecture with one hand carved, only it was like, it was as big as somebody's head. And I don't know what they had decided to do that, use that for, but, um, you know, he, he talked about how these were common in in Africa. And uh, somewhere, and I wish I could find the recording again, there is a recording of three people with huge pestles, I mean, like the size of shillelaghs, in one great big wooden, and they are all they're playing music because each shillelagh makes a slightly different tone and the three of them are alternating <laughs> when it's the most amazing thing. And I, I would really love to know where that was and you know, what local area that was, but I've never found it again. I stumbled on it once in a recording on a radio. And by the time I wrote them, the radio had gone out of business and nobody could tell me anything. Okay, so they are now as roasted as I want them because if they get really, really black, they taste burnt. Um, the next thing you would do is to take this around to your guests and let them inhale the lovely smell. Mm. Mm. Yes, because that is also a gift to your guests. Then, you can see I've been doing coffee in this one for a while because it's like stained on the inside. <laughs> um, that also helps them cool a little bit before you start cracking them. And another really good thing about the deep, tall ones is that the coffee beans don't jump out like they would out of the shallow bowl ones. And I know this because I left <laughs> left this at home once 
And somebody said, oh, I've got a mortar and pestle. Let me run back to camp and get it for you. And we spent the majority of the cracking time catching beans and throwing them back in. <laughs> Now, in case I missed it, at the beginning of your story, mm -hmm. talking about the first coffee, do we have a date on that? Did you say a time no, frame? No, I did not say a time, and that's because I'm terrible on them. I want to say it's 11th or 12th century. Okay. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're, I, but it gives a good it, starting place to yeah, look. Yeah, it gives a good starting place to look. Yeah, it was either... If it was either 1,000 or 1,100. And now we know how long boys have been putting things in their mouth. That they <laughs> oh, no. Boys have been putting their things in their mouth forever. We Long before there was a date on it. So, are the beans hard to, yes, to crush at this are. point? Yes, they are. They're... Whoop. Balance. Will the sun go down there so you can see it? Yep. Okay. And if you, you know, if you hit them too hard and it's not a long, deep thing, out they come. Like this one, anyway. <laughs> They're excited. Um, somewhere on, somewhere on YouTube, there's a short video of a little girl, she can't be more than three. I think she's two. And she's dressed in a lovely white dress with stripes on it, <clears throat> striped trim on it, as is traditional in Ethiopia. And obviously she has not made the coffee, but she is being encouraged to pour her first coffee. And she's all dressed up and it's all set up and she picks up the pot and actually manages to pour it in a little cup, whereupon the crowd goes wild, okay? Apparently grandma and auntie and daddy are all there and daddy like immediately runs in and grabs the pot from her and kisses her all over because she's done such a good job. <laughs> and the kid's like, what? <laughs> But that's really a big deal it's a in big the tradition deal. and the rituality yes, of it. Yes, yeah, it's really a big deal. And it sounds like they ingrain it really early oh, so yeah. that it's like you've never not known it. Yeah, you, you, it just, well, when you think about it, aiming something from a tiny little spout like this into a tiny little cup like that, well, little girls haven't had any practice with it. <laughs> um, The other thing is, you don't want them to swell so that they won't come back out. <laughs> so they have to be. Um, this is probably my favorite part. Because <laughs> um, you can get your aggressions out and still have a reward at the end, which is nice coffee smell. <laughs> <clears throat> it's getting there if you can want to look again <clears throat> I mean yeah. I still have some whole beans but mm -hmm. it's getting there So we have Ethiopian coffee, and then we have Turkish coffee. How many other types of, if I'm asking this correctly, how for that other, region, how many other, or just in general, how, which direction did it spread next, or how many do we have? That's a good question, and I, I mean, there is, there's documentation of the 16th century, um, coffee being such a thing in Turkey that there are now guilds for top coffee houses. Um, there is, 
many, many, many years ago when I started on this journey, somebody showed me a painting without any references at all. It was obviously an older painting. I was told it was 16th century of this little house that was obviously a coffee house. There is the barista is standing at a counter and he has little pots and he's obviously making coffee, although the heat source is not obvious, but that's what he's doing. And then there are a bunch of men sitting around enjoying bowls of coffee. And there seems to be a waiting line to get in at the door because there are several people standing facing in. There's also seems to be a wall removed so that we can see the whole scene. And there are wheels underneath the floor. And then there's either one or two men, it, it, definitely not enough for the job, pulling this thing by, you know, ropes or something, straps or something. And it's in a city street, obviously. I assumed in my ignorance <laughs> that it was a rolling Starbucks. I mean, what else do you think? <laughs> Years and years and years later, the amazing captain of the uh, Turkish marching band, general of the Turkish marching band, if you will, Osman, uh, explained to me that this was actually a page out of a festival book in Turkey where each of the guilds in the town in support of the Sultan's heir's circumcision had done this parade with these incredible, and someone had drawn the pictures to record it. And one of them was the coffee guild and they had a rolling coffee house to show the coffee guild. Um, there is another one I've been shown since then of the Glass Blowers Guild where they actually have a little kiln on the float and they're blowing glass and people are parading next to them holding a bunch of examples. Um, so in to say again how many other coffees there are and which way it's spread, I really don't know. I I'm supposing it traveled kind of both ways at the same time because the Moroccans definitely have it. We know that the Amazigh or the Berbers definitely have a coffee tradition. Um, and we know that by the time the Turks got to um, Hungary and Austria, you know, they left the coffee tradition there, but that was 1700 or yeah, that was 1700. So I think we are ready. Let me see. Um, oh, you know what I did not bring was a piece of, of a Cheese straw pot. mat to make a funnel to get into here. Do you need a funnel? Pardon me? Do you need a funnel? Yes, please. Okay. So it's not all as fine as I wanted, but I got impatient. And this or that, for that particular one, which I'm only going to fill about halfway because there's not very many of us. Um, it's about an eighth of a cup, maybe. Uh, maybe as much as a sixth. Yeah, it's an art, not a science. The funnel is because I forgot a straw mat to curl up and use as a funnel, which is traditional.
this is what happens when you are impatient and you don't grind it fine enough. Let's not burn that. <laughs> Although it probably would make a great quick burning log um, and smell good. So we talked about the different spices that the different areas used. The Hungarians, for instance, use cinnamon. Okay. No, and the Austrians use cinnamon. Why do we think they added particular spices? Was it that it would be native to where they were or no. just... Um, because cinnamon does not come from Austria. Well, that's true. Um, I believe, I once had a student who said, you realize this is the only coffee, every, every, if I just have coffee, like someplace, uh, I get indigestion. This is the only time I don't. Every spice I've heard of being added is a digestive. And coffee not being filtered um this may have been you know the way to compensate for all that for all that acid mm -hmm. um i don't know and i'm sure just like nobody puts in a book don't use poison ivy as toilet paper everybody just knows um it's another one of those things that just makes sense because cinnamon is a digestive ginger is a digestive black pepper is a digestive so how early do we think they started adding sugar to their coffee um or 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 an even creamer of any kind or would that have been like an abomination over the fine coffee they had just ground and brewed um, I'm sure it never occurred to them to use cream until they got to Europe. Um, Makes sense. Because um, first you've got to be able to store it in refrigeration. Uh, what are you going to keep milk around for? How are you going to keep milk around, especially in a hot climate? Goats. <laughs> well, you know, had... <laughs> Excuse, we have our goat standing right over there, stand in line for this, the dispenser of the milk. <laughs> um, and as far as sugar is concerned, they had sugar, but um, it was, you know, it was for the very rich, you know, kind of like, I don't know if there was some place, there's a thing that says, Oh yes, to cook mangoes, but don't cook mangoes because the only mango tree is in the Sultan's yard and if you're cooking mangoes, you're against the law, right? <laughs> um, just the coffee we have today is such an interesting departure from where it began and what people will do. Well, yeah, start with filters, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Uh -huh. Now, everybody uses paper filters now when my mother was a kid in Puerto Rico, and they do make coffee as strong as anything Arabic, but they used to have a sock. And eventually it was just a piece of muslin sewn into a very long cone, but uh, one of the first lessons I learned was you're on your own if you are one piece stuck in there blocking it. Um, if you're silly enough to wash it with soap and water, your life is in your somebody else's hands. <laughs> um, and I don't know where the Puerto Ricans ended up using something to filter. I know that the custom of really dark and heavy coffee may have come from there was the end of the 19th century early 20th century 
there were a lot of Armenians in the Caribbean. So I'm sure this changed the aesthetic of coffee, but I don't know about where the filters came from. I really don't. Okay, we got it all in. So now, we will pour water. <laughs> set it here to cook and that will take a while and of course we're not going to watch grass grow so I will start with uh, I will start with the Turkish which takes a lot less time now the modern concession is these days since sugar is re readily available it's customary to do this sweet very few people do it without sugar um i used to think that it was because if you got the sugar in it you can go to the next aesthetic which is to create the illusion of cream in it because the air bubbles bubbles hold and you get all that foam but uh, the Turks also used to never make decaf <laughs> I'm a heart patient I have to have decaf now so now I make for my class and then I make the decaf for me because that's the only way I could do it and the sugar does not make the foam stay so it must be the caffeine. I don't know. <laughs> um, so well, you've that, taken out the natural essence of yeah. the bean, so. The oils, maybe? The oils, or the acid, yeah. even. Yes. So to start with, for the recipe, and the recipe is online, and somewhere I will put, I don't know if it's at the end of this, Maybe at the end of this, on a, on a flash up, we will put a, um, where you can download the recipe for this one. I do not have a recipe for the Ethiopian one because it's an art, not a science. So to start with, you start with a trapezoid shaped pot. Yes, you can do it. You can do boil coffee in a straight up shape pot, but physics is where it's at and it works like this. Does it actually work the other way? Um, you will have whatever shape you have and to measure how much it's going to take, you're going to, this is gonna get interesting. Um, These are the size cups. It is not a cup as in an eight ounce cup or mug. These are the size cups, which are what? Two and a half, three ounces maybe? Okay, big shot. Yeah, a shot, yes, a shot glass of coffee. There you go. It is strong enough so that that works. And you're gonna pour it in. <clears throat> you never wanna get higher than the neck with the water because it will foam and it'll boil over if you fill it to the top. So for this one, oh. eh, I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna do the, the next one only a half. I want to 
see, I don't know if you can see the water in there, but it is, there's definitely mm -hmm. like almost two fingers to the top mm -hmm. from the water. Um, <clears throat> then according to how much water you've added, you will take your coffee and add Yes, I know, it's a lot. <laughs> One generous teaspoon for each of those coffee cups that you've measured water in. Okay. Now it's starting to look full, but remember, this is dry goods, it's gonna sink down. Um, then in the, the Turkish tradition, you will use a uh, cardamom for flavoring or the digestive involved. I will say that I was wrong. I used to say, don't use the powdered at all because all it's going to do is sit on top and it's not. Well, I was wrong. You, you you can definitely bar buy powdered cardamom and it works just fine but I've got half a pound of these seeds and I'm using them <laughs> and it's probably closer to what they actually did um, you this is a whoops this is a cardamom seed pod rather and inside them are seeds. I like to add at least two per cup or two per serving. They're so tiny and they're only gonna bar boil for a little bit, but, oh, oh, I just lost a few. This is actually need to add uh, we'll probably need to add a little bit more coal so these are the seeds from like two different seed pods sometimes they come out stuck together like this one looking like you know a pod a very miniature pod for the pod people and sometimes they break apart like this now I have friends who like to squash them before they put them in, I don't see the, uh, the point, um, and I don't bother. So they're gonna go in, and yeah, it's a random amount, but more is more. <laughs> um, and then, these days, people do use white sugar and I have found more people like it than don't. Now, we do have the occasional person who's like, I just don't do sugar. Well, and that's perfectly fine, ask before. Because this is made in such small batches, it's easy enough to do, you know, one serving or two servings without sugar for someone. But I would never leave out a seasoning. Right. Um, this is the only coffee I would drink sugar in. <laughs> I mean, I like I like to tell people that I like really strong coffee. It's like you know, cowboy coffee. You stand uh -huh. and push you up in it. This this is stronger. Yeah, this is much stronger. Um, Which is why it's served in shot glasses. <laughs> but it also is the only coffee that is strong enough so that the flavor of the sugar doesn't over. Power, yes, exactly. Um, I have taught the class and said, and s samples will be offered. <laughs> and 
had everybody show up with mugs like this. I go, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> My dear, uh, <laughs> unless you have a doctor's note <laughs> from your cardiologist, I'm not giving you that much. <laughs> Shot glass is all you get. Um, so, because I am concerned that this will, it's not boiling yet. Mm -hmm. So, I will go ahead and leave it on. And put this in. If you see right now, all the, all the, the powdered, all the dry goods have sunk to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we still have about a finger's width on top. So. Mm -hmm. I hope this part is hot. We'll pull some holes around it. Yeah, well, do that first so that, because this is so much more Getting back to Ethiopian for a second, you can't see in it, um, but sometimes you can see the steam coming out. And if you put your hand on the, you can feel the vibration when it starts to boil. Now, this has to boil a while. You're not gonna get it like this one because it's not as fine. You don't have as much surface area to get the coffee out of the water as quickly. So this is gonna to have to take some time. And the only way you can tell is to pour out a sample and look at it and say, okay, this still isn't done. This one on the other hand, the Turkish one is, it's a lot higher tech. Number one, it's metal. Number two, it's open enough so you can see what is happening. And keeping your eye on it is a very good idea because when it starts to boil, it will rise. It will rise and you don't want it to boil like a rolling boil, like you're boiling an egg. You will start to see foam and the foam will rise and you immediately smoothly Remove it from the heat before it overboils. You're going to wait for a minute for it to cool, and you're going to see the foam exhale, is the only way to say it. You're going to put it back on the fire to let it rise again. And as it starts to, you do that three times inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay. Then you will have enough heat applied to the surface area of all those tiny little grains. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to show. So Turkish grind or Arabic grind coffee is like cake flour. I don't know if the texture is obvious to you there, but it's, it's so like fine. cocoa powder too. It's like cocoa powder. It is so fine. I've had people who make truffles at Christmas come over and ask me for a quarter cup of this so they can roll their truffles in it. <laughs> um, there is my favorite company to use is a company called uh, Mehmet Effendi. They have been at the same address in Istanbul for like 150 years, something ridiculous like that. They are using different grinders, you know. Now they have like electric grinders. <laughs> Trying really but, hard not to make a Constantinople joke. <laughs> Somebody's been so <laughs> But these people, are the only brand that I can't mess up. Okay, there are many other brands by many other reputable companies, but call it user error. These are the only guys I can use. And this is a shameless plug for them. I can get them on Amazon. And um, again, I've told you before, 
um, I had heart surgery about a year ago and I was literally crying about the fact that I would never have this again. <laughs> and then Mehmet Effendi came out with a decaf. This is, the universe loves me and wants me to be happy. So I can still have coffee. <laughs> Although it won't hold the foam, but oh well. So if you want to look now, it, it's kind of looking almost solid. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost oh, like steaming milk. Yes. Um, another thing I forgot to mention was when you add the ingredients, it might make you feel better to stir it. Once you put it on the heat, do not stir it again. There is a lovely little barista out there who's done these videos where he has a tiny little whisk and he stirs in each pot. And no, <laughs> I don't know how he gets foam out of that because that's like crazy. <laughs> Um, yep. It's got a little foam around its edge. Yep, it has a little foam around its edge. And that's when you absolutely keep your eyes and your hand very close to it because when it decides to go, it's going to be bang. Um, which is another reason you don't want to do this in a roaring flame. I mean, doing it on a camp stove or something with a gas flame that's definitely underneath, because when you have to reach for it, it's no time to start worrying about whether you're reaching through flames to do it. <laughs> so. If nothing else, it's a really great excuse to just sit out next to a campfire. Yes, it is. It is. And I actually have a tiny little brazier from Kenya um, that I could take around to any place, whether they have a campfire or not, and do it. There is also... Did you see the little brass thingy? There's the little, no, that's not the little brass thing. There's the little brass thing. This looks like a Bunsen burner. And quite frankly, that's pretty much what it is. Those little feet actually are there to support a pot. And you fill it with denatured alcohol. It won't stand now because it doesn't have the water to weigh it down. Right. But. Right. Fill it with denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol. Yeah. Oh, it's the an alcohol the, burner. The burner. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. I thought we were making <laughs> coffee. We're making really good coffee now. <laughs> coffee has just got up. Uh, Stepped up our game. Although I have done it with um, very high proof um, Everclear I was because say. there was no denatured alcohol around. Um, Aha, uh -huh. and we're starting to steam here. Okay. And I'm starting to feel yep. vibration. And I can see the steam. Yep. Okay. Whoa. Are we foamy? Not yet. Looks like it's getting close. I took it off because I couldn't see it. Yeah, it's starting to get close though. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to catch the moment of bubbles. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, and it just only just had the ring around it, so. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of like bacon. When mm -hmm. it hits that moment, you yeah. better not leave it. Right. I've often told people in, you know, with modern day coffee, why I don't like flavored coffees. Mm -hmm. And whether this part is true or not, I read it in an article and it makes perfect sense to me. But most of the flavored coffees that are in our market today are inferior beans. And they haven't been... Uh, the beans are inferior, and so they haven't been um, 
roasted to the potential that they should have been because mm -hmm. they're not as good quality beans. But then they infuse them with those aromas that we smell. However, those aromas do not transfer when you make the coffee. Right. Um, and what I have noticed when I have been places and had to have that as the only coffee alternative, they are more acidic. Yes. They are more, almost astringent, I would, yes. I would say. And it, it gives you a burnt flavor. It doesn't give you the, the coffee flavor that you want. And so we're talking about adding seasonings. I started doing that years ago just because it made sense to add a little cinnamon to my coffee grounds before I brewed. Yep. And we're almost there. And, um, you know, and, and if I don't want it, if I don't mind sugar, yeah, I can add a little caramel flavoring or a little mm -hmm. dash of vanilla even because I make my own vanilla. There's less sugar in it, but yeah. Um, if I could only do this every morning. <laughs> I can see it like little bubbles. Yep. We've got great steam coming out of the pot. Oop. And here it's starting to rise. Whoa! And the handle it is, is hot. hot. Holy moly. <laughs> Do you need a... Could I have a glove, please? <laughs> yes. And here, you on? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go again, again for the second time. It really doesn't take long to start bubbling again. No, it doesn't. But it's foam. If you see big bubbles like fish bubbles, mm -hmm. it's it's done. Um, if you want foam, you're gonna have to start a second one. Right. And there, it's gonna start doing fish bubbles if I let it go any longer. Okay. okay. And Three. One, this is actually the second one. There was one where I just adjusted my hand, and it wasn't really out long enough to cool. And there we go. Okay, this one wants to make fish bubbles, and I'm not going to let it. Okay. So there's that. This, on the other hand, let's see how it's doing. Actually, that's not bad. It should be there by the time we finish with this one, it should be there. So, when you're doing Turkish and it's more than one serving, which this pot is, I mean, this, as you saw, this pot is almost a three pot serving, a three cup serving. Mm -hmm. The first thing you do is you scoop some of the foam out and put it in each cup so that each cup will get some of the foam. Mm -hmm. Does that also give it more room to rise when you put it on again? Oh, I'm not putting it on again. Oh, okay. No, no. It's done. No, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it's just to make sure that everybody gets some of it. Because if you pour it, the first one goes and then you don't have any more. Right. Um, put this on the wrong side to pour it because I'm left-handed. <laughs> but it's a right-handed spout. <laughs> And the, the foam will take its proper place at the top as you pour the coffee in. Lovely.
You just say it. There you go. These cups are shaped this way because it's hotter than hot when you get it off and there's no handle. However, the lip, because it's wider and thinner, dissipates the heat. So that's why the proper way to hold these cups is by the ridge. And I will pass one to you, but I, oops, I don't know if you want to film down in it or I'm allowed to take one sip from this before I start getting yelled at. <laughs> so is there a salute? Is there a, a... As far as I know, there is not. And um, <clears throat> there, we had some Turkish guests at Penzik at one of the things I was making and I served them and they, they didn't do anything. So apparently, it's not customary now. If it was customary then, nobody's told me about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, the cardamom and the sugar just pop. Yeah. Because first I you taste the sugar, you... but then you realize it's got the cardamom mixed in with it. <laughs> Chef's kiss. There, I think it's a matter of. What is it called? Aesthetic palette, mm. because so many flavors. At one, at one event, I had I accidentally left my um, cardamom pods in camp. Mm. But I was next to a kitchen which had uh, which had a hand of ginger. And I sliced ginger and put it in, and a little pinch of black pepper to like offset it, and the crowd went wild. So <laughs> apparently, hot spicy coffee is a thing. Well, it is. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, if you get a hot Mexican coffee, it's yeah. got chili powder in it, which I love and that's, adore. That's true. I didn't. And that. I like to take the choc the dark chocolate that's been infused with chili oil and put a little bit of that in my coffee. Mm, the coffee accentuates the chocolate and the chili oil just bats <laughs> in all of it. Now this is better than a lot of places where I've had it. Um, and I, I don't know if that's because I'm 100% sure it's because of the technique um, and, the, and the quality of the coffee because I don't think you could probably make this and get the same results with any other kind of coffee. You, it, the grind is very important. The grind that is makes very, very much Some sense. people say, oh, I've got some uh, Bustello here. And, and that's yeah, dark, but it's not. It's dark, but it's not ground fine enough. You have to go, yeah. You, 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 but, and by the time you filter it, you don't get that much. So if you've got a grinder, and there are these adorable little grinders you could get on online mm -hmm. that look like a pepper mill, mm -hmm. but the burrs are for doing Arabic coffee, and it comes out really, really fine. Do you have one? Um, I have one. It's very, very old, and it's um, it was Solvar gave it to me, mm. and I have to turn it like with a wrench because I can't grab the handle. Right. Um. But yeah, you can you can get them now on, and they're not that expensive. I mean, they're under twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. And because uh, that'll be another good thing to add if somebody wants to go the grinder route, then yeah. that's a thing that they can look for if you really want to set up essentially a kit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we have a lot of woodworkers. You know, we know so many people that can turn wood if yeah. you really want to get what you want. You yeah. Know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think this is ready to roll, except it's going to have to sit and settle for a while because 
it's been in a rolling boil. Okay. And so. Um, as far as the cups are concerned, mm -hmm. um, they're not all the same size. I mean, that one is probably half an ounce to half an ounce bigger than this one. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, it's just the manufacturer. Um, is it wider? No, is it's actually shorter. Up for it? It's actually shorter and as, and as narrow or narrower. Um, let's see. Interesting. Uh, okay. It is shorter, oh, and it's okay. definitely interesting. Not that much wider, um, but it holds a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So, always measure with the cups you have uh, into the pot with the water. That's extremely important yeah the cups you're going to use are going to be what would you what, get yeah um usually you can buy them in sets of 12 although i've seen them as things become more expensive i have seen sets of six being sold do you want me to put the cover on the thing so it doesn't blow ash on us um, or are we done yeah, with it or are we going to need it again later no we're not we're, we're completely not. done with it mm -hmm. okay for it now, traditionally, these would the cups would be set out in a tray, and it would be poured from way up here. It doesn't appear as dark. It isn't, and I didn't roast it as dark either. Ah. Um, remember, I only went to medium. That is true. Um. It's an entirely different aesthetic. Mm. Uh, okay, now, the tradition is to offer both sugar and salt. And I was, I thought at first, <laughs> that's madness, <laughs> but then I had to remember, I was taught when brewing coffee through the sock to put a pinch of salt in it mm. to bring the flavors out. Okay. So. I'm going to take your recommendation on what goes into the cup. Um, and with these tiny cups, it is literally pinch a, a, a few grains. I mean... <laughs> You want to try it that way? Sure. However you're going to do it. Okay. I've put salt on weirder things. I think. Mm. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I'm not going to let you catch it like that because it's going to be too hot. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Baker's hands. <laughs> All right. Even the sm it, the smell is different. It's different. It's, it's a entirely, completely different it's an experience. Entirely different experience. Yeah. That's right. Now, I am. The flavor is much more subtle. Mm hmm But it's not bad. It's not, it, but it also doesn't taste like any other coffee I've had. There is almost a citrus finish to the end of it. I feel that. And it's much more acidic. Mm, yes. Um, and I don't taste the salt. No. It just, it just dissolves and does what it needs to do, yeah. which you wouldn't expect. Right, right. I would say Now, this that is the Ethiopian. This is the Ethiopian. Okay. Or, excuse me, also Eritrean. Okay. Because uh, Ethiopia has never been influenced or mm. conquered by another country, but Eritrea was. Mm. And it's the other half 
of and so culturally things are a little bit different although they pretty much stick to the same coffee thing except I have seen coffee pots from Eritrea that are probably meant just to serve it in that are porcelain they're not terracotta and they're, they're gorgeous but I would never put that in the fire right <laughs> right um and it seems like you would want to serve it from the pot that you brewed it in because that's where, you know, it is best. Yeah, I don't know, but it, it, I think it was the Italians who had Eritrea for a long time. Um, I have to look it up, but I believe because Othello was called an Ethiopian. Mm-hmm got to figure out if that links the story somewhere and if any of you write to me and tell me if you know where to look that up <laughs> well i am going to give my personal opinion i believe i like the turkish better mostly it feels richer stronger the, the flavor is not stronger but it's it's heavier in body it's got the lovely sweet and the cardamom it's less acidic that's acidic. my biggest thing is because the while the Ethiopian is delicious, if you want something milder in flavor, it's going to be more acidic. So you have to keep that in mind. I think. But I would not turn it down is, if I was offered a cup. <laughs> this is version one. Yes. That's version seven. Okay. Because I cannot believe. You know, people say, well, how do you know that's, I know because who in the world was sitting around after they had metal coffee pots and say, oh, let's do this for a change. No, <laughs> this is definitely much closer to the first coffee pot. Um, does it get stronger as it sits? Yes. Like most coffee does. Uh, to a point. Mm. To a point. Because, I would think with this, though, with the acidity, um, the, that would be really hard. What is very common is you pour it all out, and then you add water, and you put it back in the fire. Mm. So, yes and no. Um, and the tradition also is that the third cup is the signal that the party's over, go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's been keeping you up if you've made it to three cups. Well, if you've made it to three cups. With three the cups to the wind. We, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three, three cups with the Ethiopian. And by then, it must be waterier because it's all been done on the same grounds. And right. they actually have names for the different, and I don't know them because... Like I first, a name for the first pour when it's freshest, and then the second pour when it's a little less, and then the third well, pour. Well, no, not so much when it's freshest, but how many times water has been used right. to brew it. So that by the third one, the beans don't have that much to offer anymore. Right. So, yeah. Yep. Yep, like I said, wouldn't turn it down if somebody offered it to me. So, <laughs> so um... This is all I have. If you were trying to put your own kit together, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of, there's like a not so pretty kit with stainless steel that you can actually buy from the Effendi people. They, they do make a, a pot, and a small can of coffee for like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. But you don't get, you don't get the cups and, um, and you don't get the cardamom seeds with them. Cardamom seeds, can, if you've got an Asian mm -hmm. or an Indian grocery store nearby, mm -hmm. you can always find cardamom pods. Mm -hmm. In fact, a number of Indian restaurants I've been in they're given out to chew at the end as a, like a palate cleanser. Sure. Um, the way you use ginger with sushi. The way you use ginger with sushi, right. There is, um, 
you could, like I said before, you could get the sets of cups in either 12 or six. Um, so there doesn't seem to be anyone who sells all of it at the same time. You have to Well, find. I do in my classes because it, my classes in person, I mean, where are you going to get it <laughs> in the middle of a campground? Right. So I will bring, I will bring kits mm -hmm. and they will have coffee cups and pots and the pot and sugar and spices and... And it will be in a container so you can actually take it back to camp without dropping anything. Um, now, do you do you have a class fee for those kits? What, what I have is the kits, because I can never get all the pots the same size. Right. So according to the pot and how many cups it makes, so I've got that many cups and so forth, and how much coffee... They're different prices according to sure the sizes they are. But they but they choose. get to walk home and yeah. say, I've got the kit now and I can yeah, learn I to can do, do this. It. Yes. And they yeah, that's great. Get the rest of them. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you could go on Amazon. There was a place I used to order stuff from called Bosphorus Market on the Internet. And they were... They're a Turkish mail order place, and they've got, oh my gosh, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Um, but I'm sure there are a couple of other companies like that. However, um, ordering things from overseas right now is a pain in the snoot. Um, <laughs> and, and it takes a long time for anything to come like that that alcohol brazier literally took three months to get to me and it's made in egypt uh so you know you you know what i know to get to get them and you can put your own kits together i would say if you get a couple of friends together to be able to break up a set of a dozen cups and parcel out a huge can of coffee you could save a lot of money that way so so what do we have <laughs> we have had some delicious turkish coffee we have roasted beans we have used fresh cardamom and and all of the accoutrement that you would would need and i think we need to teach baristas this <laughs> and if i'm gonna go pay that for a cup of coffee this is what i want <laughs> um there used to be i don't know what is happening anymore there used to be a a place at Penzig that did a bunch of other things but the turkish coffee they had a little spot that just did turkish coffee on a little gas stove. And had the longest queue. Yeah, they had the longest queue. Um, and, and you know, it was expensive, but people like the uh, the Australians would get in with um, hideous jet lag. Mm -hmm. And they'd walk in the moment they unpacked. <laughs> Double shot of Turkish. <laughs> yep. So, so tell us who you, you are again. for watching. And if you've got any questions, go ahead and ask me. I may not have the answer, but somebody else may have written in with the answer. So, thank you.